Richard Dawkins said what? I, I count myself a cultural Christian. I so, Richard Dawkins, the face of atheism, suddenly starts singing hymns? Nah, not really. But there's this intriguing notion floating around that he's warming up to religion, namely Christianity. Hold your horses, though. It's not that straightforward. I didn't realize that my life had been a delusion. Let's rewind a bit. Richard Dawkins, the man behind the God delusion, has been a vocal critic of religion, Christianity included. He's like a God to atheists. Ironic as that sounds. His words have often been scathing, to say the least. Here are some classic Dawkins zingers. It is fashionable to wax apocalyptic about the threat to humanity posed by the AIDS virus, mad cow disease, and many others. But I think a case can be made that faith is one of the world's greatest evils, comparable to the smallpox virus, but harder to eradicate. We have to devote a significant proportion of our time and resources to defending it society from deliberate attack from organized religion. What has theology ever said that is of the smallest use to anybody? When has theology ever said anything that is demonstrably true and is not obvious? What makes you think that theology is a subject at all? And this one, we are all atheists about most of the gods that societies have ever believed in, some of us just go one god further. I think Ricky Gervais stole that one. Yeah. I am against religion because it teaches us to be satisfied with not understanding the world. Only the willfully blind could fail to implicate the divisive force of religion in most, if not all, of the violent enmities in the world today. Without a doubt, it is the prime aggravator of the Middle East. My point is not that religion itself is the motivation for wars, murders and terrorist attacks, but that religion is the principal label and the most dangerous one by which a they as opposed to a we can be identified at all. Thanks Richard. But wait, there's a plot twist. <gasps> Recently Dawkins has been dropping hints that might make you raise an eyebrow. He's been speaking about Christianity in a different light. The nation needs it, he says. But has the most famous and vocal atheist found religion? This is what he recently had to say. I think we are culturally a Christian country here in the UK. I call myself a cultural Christian. I'm not a believer. But there's a distinction between being a believing Christian and being a cultural Christian. I love hymns and Christmas carols, and I sort of feel at home in the Christian ethos. I think it would be a terrible thing if we became a less Christian country. It's interesting to me that you see the value and the force for good of the United Kingdom having a Christian foundation. I think it matters from a cultural point of view. Reminds me of like Obi-Wan Kenobi in Star Wars from a certain point of view. Who would have thought these words would have come out of the mouth of Dawkins? I know. But it's not about Dawkins finding Jesus in a sudden epiphany, come to Jesus moment. It's more about him realizing something profound about human nature that's been there all along. Great we human beings are creatures of ideology, always swapping one belief for another, it's like being in a cultural friends with benefits situation. At the moment, we've traded out religion for materialism and other such beliefs. There's a saying that says the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So I don't believe it's so much that Dawkins has found religion or believes in the person of Jesus, even historically. More than he realizes that human beings by nature are ideological. With some people and ideologies, less dangerous than others, ergo, let's join up against those guys. Huh. So if you swap one idea and belief and religion out, you have to replace it with another one, right? And I think Dawkins has realized that the woke one or the one adopted by the hard progressive left 
is more dangerous than the old stuffy, more tea vicar, Christianity of traditional Britain. But it's not too late to turn to God. But let's not get, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's take a step back and ponder over Dawkins' revelation. He stumbled upon something significant. The deep roots of Christianity in Western civilization. It's not just about tea drinking vicars, it's about the very fabric of our society. What Dawkins and many critics of the hard left would call wokeness, a term actually stolen from black America from the 60s, which is evolved into something else entirely, is ironically the grandchild of Christian ideology. I know, hear this, if Christianity forged the conditions for modernity to rise, which then spawned post-modernity, then that leads us to where we are now in the West. It didn't evolve out of Islamic, Hindu or Oshun theology, but Christian. But it's like the teenager rejecting and bad-mouthing their square and out-of-touch parents, mm. but except for they can't deny they actually came from them. The ancient world of the West was nothing like we have known the last hundred of years. Well, not us literally, we're not yet a hundred. Romans and Greeks had very different ideas about women, children and slaves that all had zero autonomy and thought of as property to various degrees with no such notion of basic human rights, even the thought, let alone enshrined. What was unique about Christianity is it really had the kernel of the belief that all human life is valid, sacred and made under God. Everybody's equal, everybody matters. And though Christianity made a lot of mistakes as it stumbled evolving along the way, it was at least heading somewhere brighter and was on the right track. Think of Christianity's message like the blood preserved in amber a la Jurassic Park, despite the flaws of its messengers. How the teachings of Jesus is a little bit like the blood in the amber in Jurassic Park. The mosquito bit the dinosaur, the mosquito isn't the dinosaur, but the blood is preserved in the mosquito, which is preserved by the amber. Work with me. The message of Christ or Christianity, though the carriers of that message were flawed, the message was preserved all throughout the ages. Now, you can extract the message, which kind of happened in the Reformation under Martin Luther, where for the first time people finally had got their hands on the Bible and knew what it was saying for themselves. You can extract the message from the messenger and realize for yourself, okay, this is what I believe, or I don't believe that. Imagine a time capsule thousands of years from now. You discover a CD of Eminem and believe that that CD was representative of all historic rap music as opposed to culturally appropriated. If appropriation can happen really, with culture yeah, and music, then appropriation can happen with beliefs, particularly religious ones. But that's another story. Christianity is a message that shaped our values and our society, whether we believe it or not. And maybe Dawkins really needs to take a look closer. But other voices have started to make that consideration. Voices like Jordan Peterson and Zuvi, who delve into Christianity's undeniable impact. They're not pushing dogma, trying to get you to church. They're just dissecting history. Peterson has said this, the Bible is way more than just true. It's the bedrock of Western civilization. Roughly speaking, we have a bedrock of agreement. That's the Bible, by the way. All those books in some sense emerge out of that underlying book, AKA the Bible. Zuby, a rapper an online intellectual and commentator recently said on X, many Westerners want the benefits of Christianity without the Christianity part. It doesn't work long-term. There is no vacuum. Even the world's smartest atheist, <clears throat> Dawkins, seem to be working that out. And he also wrote this in a tweet in December. I don't think I've ever said this publicly and directly, but I think the West is absolutely screwed if it loses Christianity. Explaining this in full would require an entire book, but I've thought about it a lot over the years and reached this conclusion. 
It's like removing the foundations of a building, but pridefully expecting it to remain standing forever. All while the enemies both inside and outside are trying to knock the building over. Reminds me of the game Jenga, you know, when you take out the bricks and try not to make the whole thing collapse? It's not just cultural Christianity. If cultural Christianity has made all of this, then maybe there's a lot more to Christianity that Dawkins previously strawmanned and dismissed. Jordan Peterson, who might himself define himself as culturally Christian. That's definitely true. Or at least in love with the Christian origins of the West and its ideas without, you know, being a tambourine banging, Jesus is my savior kind of guy, makes an argument like the celebrated historian and author of Dominion, Tom Holland, not Spider-Man, for the foundational and undeniable impact of Christianity on Western civilization. Holland, again, not Spider-Man, had this to say, in my morals and ethics, I have learned to accept that I am not Greek or Roman at all but thoroughly and proudly Christian. The more you live in the minds of the Romans, and I think even more the Greeks, the more alien they come to seem, the more frightening they come to seem. And what becomes most frightening really is a kind of quality of callousness that I think is terrifying because it is so innocent. It's not that people are aware of what they're doing, it's that they're not aware of what they're doing. Caesar is by some accounts slaughtering a million Gauls and enslaving another million in the process. He's promoting it and when he holds his triumph, people are going through the streets of Rome carrying billboards boasting about how many people he's killed. This is a really terrifying alien world and the more you look at it, the more you realise that it is built on systematic exploitation. Don't worry, Zuby, you don't have to write that book. This one suffices. It's a really great book, worth a read, even if you're not into the whole Jesus thing. You are not as wise as you think you are. So where does that leave Dawkins? Perhaps he's only scratching the surface. Now he's saying this about Christianity and its impact on society because he realizes there's something a lot worse on the horizon. He name checks Islam in the LBC interview, but we won't go there. Let's stick to wokeness. So maybe if he's wrong about that, he might also be wrong about this, in that maybe he needs to go a little bit deeper and more thoroughly to acknowledge that actually Christianity not only has merit, be it culturally, but deserves our full exploration and consideration. Maybe there's more to Christianity than meets the eye. But hey, don't take my word for it. A little bit biased. Explore, question, and come to your own conclusions. So, has Dawkins finally found Jesus? <laughs> no. And has he had a great religious revelation? Maybe not so much. But he's definitely come to know what a lot of us have already known that Christianity has impacted society to this point and does have some form of value. But that's what I think. What do you think? Let's keep the conversation going and don't go anywhere. There's a video right about here. See you over there.